Hey guys, first off, uh, I want to give a big thanks for all the uh, subscriptions and comments and uh, views. Uh, the project has generated much more interest than I would have imagined, so it's really cool to see people interested in this kind of stuff. Second, uh, I saw a lot of comments about Back to the Future and DeLorean, so I thought we'd take a little trip out to the driveway. Great Scott! This is my 1982 DeLorean, which I've owned for the past uh, 12 years about. And uh, I don't drive it every day, I have a Civic for that. And I take this to car shows, um, about two or three shows a year. So this year I will be at West Coast Dream Machines in Half Moon Bay in, on uh, May 1st. All right, well I hope you enjoyed that. Now let's get down to business. What do you need to make a electron microscope and how much is it going to cost? All right, let's get started. So here's a, a really rough uh, schematic of the microscope. <clears throat> Sorry for my poor drawing ability, but this is basically the electron column over here. So this is the filament at the top, the electron gun. Uh, the electrons proceed down the column. This is where your sample would be. And this is the secondary detector. So uh, my goal here is just to give you an idea of what the main components are, what their approximate cost would be if you were to buy them on eBay. And um, telling you what I paid for them I don't think would be all that helpful uh, because, you know, like I say, I've had a lot of this junk in my shop for a long time and some of it was, you know, found or donated or repaired or whatever. So I'll try to give you the, uh, the eBay cost for most of these. So let's start at the top. The tungsten filament is a relatively simple thing. It's just a piece of wire. In fact, my original plan was to use tungsten wire and just bend it into a filament shape and call it a day. The problem with that is that you have to, you know, filaments burn out and you have to make new filaments. And uh, if the size is a little bit off, it might take a long time to realign. So I, I opt, and then the other problem is you need some kind of an insulator. So you either custom machine your own ceramic or whatever. It gets pretty complicated. So what I opted to do, especially because I found these, is just buy the filaments pre-made off eBay. So these are uh, actual electron microscope filaments. And as you can see, they come in a, in a pack because they do burn out pretty often. You know, 40 hours of use or something is not unreasonable. Uh, and it comes with this nice ceramic insulator. So I was able to design an electron gun that would just accept this right away and, and it would be really easy. These were pretty cheap. I think I spent about $30 or something for this whole box of filaments. Um, so we'll, we'll start there. Uh, and like I say, you, there's absolutely nothing wrong with, with making your own filaments. You, you can just bend that stuff into the shape and be all set. Let's put down 30 bucks for the, uh, the filaments. Now you need a power supply for the filament, uh, and this you'll probably have to build. There's really no ready-made um, power supply that's going to do what we want. What we need is uh, DC. It can't be AC. I originally built an AC power supply for it, and it didn't work, so I had to rectify it. I don't know why. We'll talk about that later. Uh, you basically have uh, a 6-volt, like, you know, 115 to 6-volt transformer, so a low-voltage X-former. And then you need some way of adjusting the voltage. I used a variac. It can be a pretty small variac since we're not talking huge current. And then you also need an isolation transformer since uh, variacs do not isolate. And the other side of this filament is going to be connected to high voltage, so you can't, you can't go straight through. You need an isolation transformer. I think the parts cost was probably under $100. We'll just put down $100 to be, to be sure. Um, the next guy is the sort of the main power supply for the acceleration of the electrons. And this is like a 0 to 10 kV would be a good supply DC. Uh, it has to be very tightly regulated. It can't be an unregulated power supply. So like a, a flyback with a capacitor on it's not going to do it. it. It actually needs to be regulated. Uh, again, my power supply was more or less found for, for very low cost at a flea market. Uh, but there are good power supplies on eBay in this range, and, and they aren't so bad. So we'll, we'll put down 100 bucks for that. And I'll talk about what I used off eBay, too, in, in just a minute. 
The condenser lens is something you're going to machine from parts, and we're not talking about machining or parts yet. This is just the block components. Uh, so moving on, we have the scan plates, the deflection plates. Uh, you'll need a raster generator to drive those. This is also something you'll probably have to build. I actually would have been really happy to buy this. And uh, in the comments, we've been talking about doing a digital version of this thing. And uh, instead of using like an analog oscilloscope with all this, you could do it all digitally with an FPGA or something. And, and that is actually a good idea. I wouldn't mind doing that. Uh, but anyway, for the raster generator, you know, you need like a 400 volt supply inside here. And uh, some transistors and stuff. And I'll, I'll talk about more of that in the sources later. Why don't we put down another 100 bucks for the parts in there? Uh, the focus power supply, this is also like 0 to 10 kV. Um, we're going to put down 70 for that one. On eBay, if you search for Spellman power supply, there's a negative 6 kV to plus 10 kV supply that no one seems to want to buy because the part number is like a custom part number. They're available now, or at least the last I checked, there was at least one or two still on eBay. Uh, but luckily, the pinout and all the voltages are written right on the side of the power supply case, so it's actually a little bit cheaper than most other high voltage regulated power supplies on eBay. Okay, then we have the photomultiplier itself. This is the one that I used. It is a Hamamatsu R6094, 6094. I don't think there's any more of these on eBay, but there might be. I only paid about $35 for this, which is a little bit lower than the average, but not much. You can go on eBay and find photomultiplier tubes for, for 50 bucks. So we'll put down 50 for that. And then you need a power supply to drive it. This I did buy off eBay very recently, and I spent about $100 for that. Um, it's a uh, five, uh, 200 volts to 2,000 volts or something like that. It's a rack-mounted power supply. Uh, then you need a power supply for the Faraday cage on the secondary detector. This could be 0 to 1,000 volts, also tightly regulated DC. Um, I think I probably spent about 50 on that for off of eBay. Uh, then you need a phosphor, the accelerating power supply. This can be, it doesn't have to be adjustable. This one can just be 10 kilovolts. Uh, again, I, I think I use one of these Spellmans too, so we'll put down 70 bucks for that. Then you need the actual phosphor. This is another part that you really can't cheat on. So I went to an electron microscope supply house and just bought the little phosphor disc. And I would show it to you, but Sadly, I ruined the thing in a very stupid way, but, but it actually still works, surprisingly. So those images that I showed in my last video were made with the broken phosphor disk. Anyway, that was, I think that's about $90, the phosphor. Now, at the bottom of the microscope, and I haven't talked about this yet, a lot, most microscopes have like a mechanical stage that moves the specimen around. Uh, so I bought a couple of those off eBay. Not really, I haven't even hooked them up yet. Uh, you, know, you, you can move the scan pattern around electronically, but that only goes so far. So it's, it's really nicer to have a mechanical means as well. So put down 150 for the pair of stages. You, don't, you could build them yourself too. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so now below this dotted line here, this is sort of like the vacuum system. This is just the electron microscope section. So we're talking vacuum down here. Uh, you need some kind of a chamber. I, I honestly forget how much I spent for that glass bell jar, but I, I wouldn't recommend glass anyway. Uh, really, a metal column would be a much better choice. So I, I'm going to leave that one blank, because who knows how much that is. But you do, you do need a high vacuum gauge, and I used a penning gauge. Um, and I spent about 175 on that, I think, a while back. I've had it for a long time. And then you need a high vacuum pump. In my case, I used a diffusion pump, which is good because they're cheap and um, very robust. It's, it's hard to kill those things. Diffusion pump, uh, you know. The one that I used was a three inch diffusion pump, which is you know, a pretty good size for that chamber, but it could be a little bit bigger. Don't bother with the two inch diffusion pumps. Go for a four at least, three or four. Uh, these are available on eBay. 
And like you say, it just kind of depends on the, uh, the atmosphere. Sometimes you might get one for a hundred bucks, other times not. Let's put down, let's put down 200, why not? And then you need a mechanical pump. These are actually much easier to find. You can get a mechanical pump that's meant for uh, air conditioning service. That's, that's great. Th those, are, those are good pumps for that. So put down 200 and get yourself a brand new one for that. And um, like you see, this, this you know, cost breakdown really doesn't cover any of the, like the parts parts, like the Teflon for these insulators and the, the metal and the rods and the adjustment stuff. These are just sort of the big ticket items that, that you really can't get around. And I got my, you know, if you really want to shock, just look into the cost of some of these things. This is really cheap high vacuum grease, but the really high quality stuff is like $50 for like a, a one ounce tube. So, I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of crazy costs involved. You, you don't have to go overboard. Um, so I guess I should add all these up for you. I guess I'll do that in post-production because <laughs> I don't want to do it right now. And... Um, in the next video, I'll, I'll get into more detail with each one of these things, and, and again, bring up cost, but th this is just to give you a really basic idea. And I'll also compile a list of sources so that you can see where I got my information to build this thing. All right, well, feel free to post any questions you have. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.